it's a little bit weird sitting in my kitchen, but tonight is my annual Christmas feast. So I am just putting some finishing touches on things like I do because I'm a homemaker. I'm hosting this party. It's my job. Like this Yule cake, which, you know, actually reminds me. Do you guys know the origins of Christmas? And I'm not talking about like Santa and the elves. I'm talking about the actual historical pagan roots of Christmas. Well, if you don't, don't even freak out about it because I'm going to tell you guys all about it. Starting with the precursor to Christmas, the God of Christmas, the beginning of Christmas, Saturnalia, celebrated by the Roman pagans honoring the God Saturn, like the planet, which is my favorite planet. I love the rings, but that's not the point. Saturnalia was celebrated during the winter solstice and happened from the December 17th to December 25th, which sounds a lot like Christmas time, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And then during this week of merriment, all sorts of things happened. They would drink, chin chin, and they would eat and they would gorge themselves. It's basically debaucherous. Think about it as like the Roman Mardi Gras. But my favorite part of it is they would pick a Lord of Misrule, who was usually a dude. I think it was always a dude because it's ancient times and they were jerks. So during this time, this Lord of Misrule would be drowned with women and wine and food. And it was good food. It's Rome, we're having a good time. But then at the end of Saturnalia, he was slaughtered. Yeah. So basically they would slaughter him in honor of the god Saturn to rid all Romans of evil. Yeah, this was dark y'all, but that's the thing. A lot of these things are dark. And I should mention that the sacred plant of Saturn is holly. Duh, of course it is. That's where we get holly folks. People would exchange holly wreaths, naturally. Then you have the other pagans, the Druids and the Celts and the Vikings who worshiped the oak tree. And you know what grows in oak trees? Mistletoe. And it said that some Vikings would pick a person, again, another human sacrifice, naturally, and they would poison the mistletoe and bring this guy underneath the oak tree, sacrifice him to, again, for the greater fortune of all the people. Now, granted, there's always another side of this. There's also a story that says that if two people in a fight found themselves underneath mistletoe, they would have to call a truce. But that's still not kissing like we do now, which is arguably way more awesome. And then you have the Viking god Odin, who <laughs> was celebrated during the winter solstice and had a big beard and was jolly and he sounds like Santa, doesn't he? Because it's basically Santa. What you guys have to understand is that the winter time for the ancient people was terrifying. Think about it. It's freezing, there's snow, there's rain, there's no electricity, and a lot of people die from its crops to the people. So to keep warm, to keep alive, to keep sane, they'd build fires and hang out and they would drink just to keep spirits high and they would exchange things like this Yule log, which of course back then wasn't a cake. It was an actual Yule log from an oak tree because they worshiped oak trees, but there's rules. You can cut one, but you can't keep it for yourself because apparently that's bad luck. And then you gift it to a neighbor who then makes bonfires with it. That's very sweet. You're basically keeping your neighbor alive. And then when Christianity took over Christmas and then we had Christmas Christmas, they would still do the Yule log exchange, but this time put it in their fireplace with a new set of rituals. Like you gotta put it in your fireplace and you gotta douse it with alcohol and holly and flour and burn it for the 12 days of Christmas. And now I make a cake version. This is mocha peppermint. Favorite part, favorite part. <laughs> gonna make it snow. <laughs> kind of sounds like a torture device, doesn't it? Death, 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 death. Hmm. There we go. Little you. I know what you guys are thinking. Christmas trees, those are definitely unique to Christmas, right? No. Remember when I told you guys that pagans worship trees even thinking the oak tree was sacred? And evergreen has always been a part of winter solstice activities, people bringing the branches into their homes and decorating with it. And there's even tales of people bringing trees into their homes because they believed fairy folk lived in them and they wanted to keep them warm, which is adorable and cute and I love it. I'm a big fan of that idea. So how the hell did fir trees become synonymous with Christmas? Well, there's actually a funny little legend about this. So it says that an English monk was just wandering through the German countryside and he happened upon a group of pagans about to sacrifice a man underneath an oak tree to the god Thor. And he took the opportunity, got the ax, chopped down the tree before they could commit the sacrifice, 
And when he wasn't struck down by lightning like the pagans thought, they all kind of took a moment and they're like, whoa, whoa, okay, this is kind of making us question some things. He took that opportunity to be like, hey guys, have you heard about the new thing going around? It's called Catholicism. We worship this guy named Jesus. And so story goes, they converted. And then out of that oak tree came a fir tree. And fir trees are triangular in shape, therefore representing the Holy Trinity in Jesus Christ himself. Kind of interesting, isn't it? And then of course, there's the star on top of the tree. Some people are angel families, I've always been a star family, but did you know where that came from? It was originally a pentagram. That is right, people, the star of Bethlehem was based on the pentagram. So, okay, let's be real. Why are there so many similarities between all the pagan winter solstice activities, Saturnalia, and Christmas? Well, it all comes down to control, doesn't it? When Catholicism was no longer the minority religion, when it started becoming really, really popular, they had a really hard time getting pagans to convert, especially getting them to stop their party activities during the winter. So this idea came to them and they were like, you know what? We don't have a celebration to celebrate baby Jesus. Why don't we make a celebration during the winter solstice activities and that way they can still party but in the name of Jesus. So they got on their soapbox, told everybody, hey guys, keep partying. We won't kill you, just say it's for Jesus. Isn't that a warm little story? Now listen, I'm not trying to rag on Christmas. I love Christmas. And if you celebrate the birth of Christ, power to you. I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm just simply trying to let people know what the history is here. People hear the word pagan and they think evil. They see a pentagram and they think black witchcraft. When in reality, from your Christmas tree to your holly wreaths to all of the things that we know and love and associate with Christmas really is pagan. And then on top of that, push aside all the pagan roots. Let's talk about all the creepy stuff that stemmed out of Christmas. Europe is full of the creepiest lore. And I love a good creepy story, but some of these Christmas traditions and folklore are nutty, starting with Iceland. Do you guys know how much creepy lore is over in Iceland? It's a ton and they believe in elves and there's elf lands, so I'm a big fan of them. But during Christmas time, they believe in a woman named Grilla and her 13 Yule lad children who are basically like these little creepy gnome dudes that come down from the mountains and spy on all the naughty children, eventually start messing with them, torturing them so their mama can eventually eat them. That's so sweet. And then of course you go over to Bulgaria and they got some pretty uh, nutty lore, including this really creepy woman, demon, monster thing called Frau Perta, who leaves silver for the nice kids. So that's a sweet, that's sweet, that's a sweet token. But what she does with the naughty kids is a little different. Uh, she basically replaces their innards with straw. She taxidermies children. So tell that to your kids when they're misbehaving and they'll probably snap right up. Then you have France. And I gotta be honest, this story may be true. And I'm not sure, I hope it's not, but let's tell it anyways. So supposedly there was a baker named Pere Futard who saw three little schoolboys wander past his bakery one day and he's like, I should kill those kids. So he did. And then he chopped their bodies up into little tiny pieces and put them in a barrel. And then Santa saw this because Santa sees everything and he checks it twice. So no pouting, guys, he's always watching, it's serious. And he punished him, which doesn't really feel like a punishment to me because the punishment was to be his shadow for eternity, which sounds like a great gig. Like I'd like to volunteer for that. That sounds freaking awesome. And then of course, guys, we have all the other Christmas traditions that have kind of since been forgotten. Like, did you know it used to be a Christmas Eve tradition to tell ghost stories? Hell yeah. Not just Halloween is for the spirits, y'all. Christmas used to be. Because when Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in the 1840s, everyone's like, A, Christmas is awesome again, and B, I love ghosts and death, and let's sit around the fireplace and talk about it. There's even that Christmas song called It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, where they literally sing, we'll tell scary ghost stories and tales of old glories. It's in a Christmas song, so it must be true. And then of course, you have one of my favorite Christmas things, these little fragrant balls of happiness. 
These, my friends, are called pomanders, and they have a really interesting history because they've been used from everything from witchcraft rituals to religious tokens to my favorite, balls you put on your feast table to mask the smell of disease because we all know all the plagues and all the disease that have swept through Europe and you know what's not appetizing? The smell of decaying flesh sitting next to you, which is actually perfect because my guests tonight are, well, here! Creeps, I cannot wait for you guys to meet my ghosts of Christmas past, which actually reminds me that I need to get ready. But first, more wine, naturally. Our guest of honor should be arriving any moment. I thought I was the guest of honor. I only meant- Wrong! A king is always the guest of honor. Oh, rich people. <laughs> You're all but children at the queen's table. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Krampus! Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know tonight is a super, super busy night for you. All right, well, since we are all here, I would like to raise a toast. Marie Jane Holmes, Jack, Lizzie, Vlad, and Crampy. Thank you guys all so much for joining me at my holiday feast. I hope you guys all enjoy what I've prepared for you, although I don't know if ghosts can eat. Never mind. It doesn't matter what holiday you celebrate this holiday season. It's the holidays. It's a time to drink and be merry and have fun and hang out with the people that you love. So whether you are alive or <laughs> in another stage of existence, happy holidays from my crazy holiday table to yours. Chin chin creeps. <laughs> chin chin. So, Malia tells me you're a royal as well. Voodoo queen. She says you use blood. I like blood. Oh, do tell. I heard you make money off your victims. The majority. What do you do with yours? I leave them. Wasteful. Can I ask what you've been putting in everyone's drinks tonight? Oh, poison. <laughs> I tried poison once and nothing happened. Ah, uh, patience is key. Well, and the dose, of course. I Did you put in a word with the big way. guy like I asked? <laughs> It's stupid. I just don't know what's so hard about getting your own personal rain cloud. It's not like I'm asking for the impossible here. What do you mean I'm on the naughty list? Kind of makes sense, actually. <laughs> Merry Christmas, creeps.